Now, another way to get your renders to go a little bit faster is to drop the quality of some of the render options. Uh, if we're done kind of playing with the lighting, or if you want to leave lights over here, that's fine. We can go ahead and we're going to take this render menu and we're going to dock it over to this side here. And we've already opened up the render pass menu. We're going to close that. And under render properties, you're going to see that we have shadows turned on. So of course, if you turn shadows off and you hit BPR render, it's not going to render shadows. Uh, so it's going to render really fast, but generally speaking, you probably want to render shadows. However, since we have shadows turned on, we can now go into the shadow options. And of course, if I turn shadows off, those are going to get grayed out if I turn them on. We now have access to BPR shadow settings. And you're going to see right here, we have resolution and rays. You can drop this resolution down a lot. You can even drop these rays down if you want to and hit BPR and it'll render even faster. Now that's going to lower the quality of your shadows, which if you were doing a photorealistic render, I would say having low quality shadows is probably a bad thing. But if you're doing a non-photorealistic rendering, actually dropping these down can kind of sometimes give you a cool effect. So consider that as you're developing your non-photorealistic renders. Now while we're talking about shadows in here, if I zoom in on this object here, let me go ahead and hit BPR. You're going to see there is a gradient on the shadow. You know, it goes from a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. You're going to get a very nice fall off on these shadows. Now, when you're drawing something and you're doing something that's not photorealistically rendered, a lot of times shadows can just be a single value and there won't be a lot of gradients within those shadows. ZBrush makes that really, really easy to mimic. And you're going to see right over here, right up here under the render properties where you're playing with shadows, there is a flat shadow option. So if you turn that on and then you have BPR render, you're going to see it's going to go from a rate, uh, gradient here to a very single value harsh line uh, shadow. Now, of course, again, you can see it's kind of aliased here. You can crank up your aliasing here on your SPIX aliasing, and that'll go ahead and uh, clean up the quality of those lines a little bit. But again, if we're just iterating, we're just going to keep that down at zero. In the documentation, it also says turn this vibrant down to zero. So go ahead and do that. And if we touch our canvas and we kind of rotate our model a little bit, tap in this area and you kind of push this menu down and you go down here to where it says preview shadows. And if you want to open up multiple menus, you can hold down shift and you can have multiple menus open. Um, you can turn on flat shadow and that'll give you a preview of what your flat shadows are going to look like. And then of course you can hit BPR render, that's going to be your real shadow render. So you can turn preview shadows on and off if it helps you kind of visualize what your flat shadows are going to look like. If I back up off this model a little bit and we go ahead and do a BPR render again, you're going to see we have a floor shadow and then a shadow that falls on our object. So it's, it's a cast shadow, but we actually can uh, separate these out as two separate elements. So you can see here under the BPR shadow menu, under the settings here, you have an F strength and a G strength. If you hover over these, you're going to see that's going to stand for global shadow strength and floor shadow strength, just like anything else in ZBrush, you can hold down control now to give you even more information. However, long story short, if you take this F strength and you crank it down and then BPR render again, you're going to see our floor strength gets less and then our global strength for our shadow, if we crank that down, you're going to see the cast shadow on our object is less. So play with these values to kind of dictate how heavy that your shadows are going to be when you hit the render button.